Is Brawl Stars worth playing in 2022? Also, why did I replace my background with a green screen? We will be answering one of those questions in today's video. Two days before I posted this video was Brawl Stars' fifth year anniversary from when it first went global, or not global, but beta launched. And I've been playing Brawl Stars since day one, okay? That's five years of gameplay. I've experienced every meta, every positive feature added to the game, every controversial update the game had. Now, I know a lot about Brawl Stars, but I'm also biased. My YouTube channel is all about Brawl Stars. And so obviously, I want as many people to play Brawl Stars as possible. However, I'm going to take that. I'm going to forget about it. I'm going to shove it off to the side, and I'm going to pretend that I don't create content around Brawl Stars, which is funny because that's Brawl Stars gameplay right there. But for this video, I'm going to focus on only one really important thing to help answer the question whether or not Brawl Stars is worth playing in 2022, and that one important thing is your time. After all, Brawl Stars is a completely free to play game, which means that whether or not it's actually worth it depends on how good Brawl Stars is in comparison to other free-to-play mobile games, okay? Now, over the past five years, I've played a lot of Brawl Stars. I've almost played it for 2,000 hours, okay? But I've also spent a lot of time playing other mobile games, okay? I've played Supercell games like Clash of Clans, Clash Royale, and Clash Mini. I've played other MOBAs like Pokemon Unite, Arena of Valor, Mobile Legends Bang Bang, and League of Legends Wild Rift. I've also played 3D shooters including PUBG Mobile, PUBG New State, Call of Duty Mobile, Apex Legends, and also Free Fire. Which, by the way, subscribe to my Free Fire channel right there. I've also played some massive MMORPGs like Lineage 2 Revolution, Black Desert Mobile, and I'm currently playing a lot of old school RuneScape and Diablo Immortal. I've also put some serious hours into gotcha games like Raid Shadow Legends, Guardian Tales, and Genshin Impact. And then there's Among Us, which, well, was kind of sus. <gasps> the point is, long before I ever started doing YouTube, I was a gamer. And even though covering Brawl Stars is essentially my job, I've continued to play games that I don't create content on. And I I like to tell people like my mom that I play other games to uh, stay up to date with the mobile gaming community and also to like keep myself passionate about my work. But uh, really, I just like playing games. <laughs> sorry, mom. But also, I'm not sorry. This is who I am. So we're going to be comparing Brawl Stars to like all of these other big mobile games that I've played a lot of. And we're going to be looking at it from a lot of different angles, like how friendly it is for free to play players and how will they listen to the community and like a bunch of stuff. Then I'm going to finish up by answering whether or not Brawl Stars is actually worth playing right now. But before we do that, this video is sponsored by Razer and Tribe Gaming. Wow, I put that hat on in the most awkward way possible. <laughs> you can now get custom Razer gear featuring three awesome designs that all support your uh, your love for Tribe Gaming. Click the link in the description below to check it out. Now, Razer is known for making high quality products for gamers that I've been using for years. Now, I know this might seem silly, but like one of my favorite products are their finger sleeves. Like this is so good for mobile gaming. But we've also got this sick mouse pad and this even bigger mouse pad and some Somehow, this even bigger, bigger mouse pad. We also got the sick Orochi V2 mouse with these different face plates, and I, I believe there are other mouse mice as well with custom face plates. This is awesome. Not to mention phone cases for my sweet mobile gaming friends, which is all of you. Now, my personal favorite is this red and black camo design, which is it's just so awesome. And you have a chance to get a mouse pad like this for free. All you got to do is follow my Twitter using the link below, find my tweet where I'm hosting a giveaway, and then comment which design is your favorite. A big thank you to Tribe and Razor for sponsoring this video. Make sure you click that link below so you can get some custom Razor gear yourself. We're going to start off this discussion of whether Brawl Stars is worth playing in 2022 by talking about the most important aspect of any game, in my opinion, and that is whether or not the core gameplay is actually fun and replayable, okay? There's, those are two really important things. A game can be fun, but after you've played it like two or three times, you're like super bored. But there are also games that I would say aren't actually fun, but are addictively replayable. So like, a game has to be replayable and fun, both, you get the idea. Now, obviously, this is really going to heavily depend on your personal preference. In my personal opinion, I think Brawl Stars has an amazing core gameplay experience and is 100% worth playing, right? Otherwise, I, I honestly don't think that I would be covering it. Like, I'm really passionate about covering games that I enjoy playing, which is Brawl Stars, right? I, I know I'm a little biased, but like, that's what, why I'm still doing this. But when I talk about Brawl Stars' core gameplay, I'm talking about the actual battles that take place. Let's just not think about like progression or anything else we're talking about gameplay right movement and aiming feels really intuitive and unless you have a really bad connection it is very responsive and smooth which i think makes the game feel very immersive especially for a mobile game like like it feels like you were in the game which is really cool there's almost 60 different characters and they're all unique from each other in like one way or another and a lot of them are like way different especially the newer brawlers that supercell's been releasing this past year they're like really unique 
unique, which is impressive because you think it'd get more and more difficult for them to create unique characters, but no, they've, they've somehow done it. Now, Brawl Stars' core gameplay is most similar to other top-down MOBAs, but it's also really unique. Matches are shorter and you play 3v3 instead of 5v5 like in other MOBAs. A really cool feature about Brawl Stars is that it feels like you can actually carry your team if you're skilled enough, and that means that you get rewarded for highly skilled gameplay, but it also means that you could be the reason why your team loses a match, which is like, you know, really punishes those mistakes, and I think that makes the game more fun and exciting. Now, most MOBAs only have one core game mode, and one thing about Brawl Stars that I really like is how much variety the game modes have. I think they've done a really good job at making each game mode feel like really unique and different from each other, even though the core like brawler mechanics are the same no matter which game mode you're playing in, right? Now, with that being said, Brawl Stars' game modes are fairly simple in comparison to other MOBAs, but honestly, I actually think that's okay. There are more different types of game modes, and also the matches are a lot shorter, which means that like throwing too much complexity into like, the two minute matches, I, I think that would not be a good idea. I don't want the game modes to necessarily be too much more complex unless they created a game mode that was like specifically made to last like five minutes long. Also, this feature of like very simple game modes makes Brawl Stars way easier to learn than other MOBAs, okay? Now, I have said this in the past and I stick by it. I would love a more complex 5v5 game mode in Brawl Stars that would could last five to 10 minutes. I, I personally think that would be awesome. I, I really want that to happen. But if I could only choose between a 5v5 complex game mode, like are in other MOBAs, and the 3v3 simple ones that we have in Brawl Stars that are shorter and we have a lot more variety of, like, Brawl Stars is gonna be my choice. Now with that said, one thing I like a lot about other MOBAs that I feel like Brawl Stars is kind of missing is more depth with each characters and how many abilities they have. Most MOBA characters have a main attack, three active abilities, an ultimate ability, at least one passive ability, and then one slot that can use like a set of abilities that can be played on every single character in the game. That's a total of seven abilities that make up each character, but honestly, I've actually played MOBAs where like characters have up to 10 different abilities that makes them like crazy unique, especially if you include an item slot. Brawl Stars has a main attack, a super, a gadget, and a star power, which is four total abilities, which is a lot less depth to each character, okay? Now you might be thinking that I missed gears, but I didn't, okay? Technically, you can equip two gears that each add a passive ability to your brawler. But most other MOBAs have other systems in place that are significantly more deep than gears and offer way more character customization. Not only is there usually a shop at the home base, which allows you to add various stats to your character in the middle of the match in order to like counter your opponents. But on top of that, most MOBAs also have some sort of like a rune system or an equivalent to it that can be used to build your character how you want to before you even enter into a match. Make him go like especially tanky or especially high damaging or like faster or something like that. Now to be clear, I don't think that Brawl Stars characters should have as many abilities as most MOBAs, okay? After all, most MOBA matches last like 10 to 20 minutes and are more complex with like towers to defeat, different monsters that give you different buffs that kill them, you have to worry about creeps and stuff like that. There's a lot of beauty to the simplicity in Brawl Stars and it is a big reason that Brawl Stars is my favorite MOBA game that I've ever played. But the point of all this is that I think that Brawl Stars would really benefit from more depth with each character build by like reworking gears, which I've talked about that already. You could watch this video if you really want to. It outlines how I think Brawl Stars should do it. And I think that would be a great way to add more depth to each character in the game. Overall though, I love Brawl Stars' core gameplay and I find it very fun almost every single time I hit that big golden play button. Um, it kind of depends on the teammates that I get or how hard the challenge is in my video. <laughs> now let's talk about the second most important aspect to any game in my opinion, and that has to do with how the game is monetized. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> okay, I have a lot of thoughts on this topic and I, I could really talk about this for a long time. In fact, I would enjoy doing that, just talking about monetization for a whole video and like sharing my own personal thoughts on it. But I'm not a game developer. I'm not an expert. I've just played a lot of games and I, I feel like I have thought, of, I, I come up with some unique perspectives to it. Either way, one thing that's really important is that game developers have to monetize their games somehow, okay? A quick Google search will reveal that it costs between 60 and 80 million dollars to develop and launch a triple A game right now, okay? Now, most games, like a lot of the games that I listed earlier, they don't cost that much to produce, but I can assure you that they cost a lot more to make than you might think. And if a game developer requires several million dollars to produce the game, they can't just eat those costs because they like are making games for the, their, the good of their own heart. They're like, hey, I made this really expensive game and now I'm in debt, but hey, you guys can play it for free. They don't do that. And also, it, it's like, yeah. 
We can't expect them to do that. That doesn't make sense. They've got to feed their employees. They've, you know, they've got to like take care of their people. They've got to like, we want them to retire, right? We want them to do so, so that they can continue making great games for us. That is why I'm okay with more monetization in games than most people are. But in order for them to do that, freemium games have to fit two criteria to be a good game, in my opinion, at least when it comes to monetization. The first criteria is that skill and time spent in the game has to be more important than how much money you spend in the game. A good rule of thumb is that if it is possible for you to be number one in a PvP game without spending any money on the game, then that game passes the first criteria. If the game is PvE, you're not playing against other players, but you're just playing against like mobs and monsters and things like that, like a gotcha game or something, then it passes this criteria if it is possible to beat the hardest content in the game without spending any money in the game. You might not beat it the fastest and like you might not be like the number one, but you're able to clear all the content. That's criteria number one. The second criteria is that the, all of the game content in the game has to be unlockable for free to play players in some way. I'm not saying that free to play players should be able to unlock every single cosmetic ever, right? But as long as there is a way for free to play players to unlock each individual piece of content, if they're patient enough, then the game passes the second criteria. Now, if a game fails on one of those two criteria, I don't think that the game is worth playing unless the core gameplay is so much fun that it makes up for it. And I, I absolutely think that that is the most important thing. I'm fine playing a game that's pay to win. I, I really am, as long as the core gameplay is fun, even if I am not paying, right? That's why fun gameplay was the most important factor and monetization is the second most important factor, okay? Now, Brawl Stars does pass both of these criteria. You can be number one in the game without maxing out your account and without max brawlers. You technically can, okay? It's gonna be really hard, but it is possible. And also plenty of people are able to max out their accounts without spending any money in the game. Additionally, everything can be unlocked somehow if you're willing to save your gems or your star token, star points or whatever. Like you can get everything in the game. You might not be able to get all of it, but you will be able to get a lot of it if you're patient and smart with your resources. However, these two criteria, they're very simple and there are other things that I look at when it comes to monetization. There are some games that monetize their games so that you don't get a competitive advantage at all, no matter how much money you spend in the game, okay? This is usually done with cosmetics or other other perks that don't give you a competitive advantage. Brawl, Star Brawl Stars does not do this, okay? You can pay and spend money to have higher level brawlers than your opponents. That's that's just like, you can pay to win in Brawl Stars to an extent, okay? Games that don't do this though, that are like strictly free to play and you get zero competitive advantage. I like the way they monetize the game more than I like how Brawl Stars does it. And I really like it when games do this, but games that do this tend to struggle with another issue. And that tends to be a lack of satisfying long-term progression. I really like games that have a long-term progression, okay? It makes it feel like I'm putting my time towards something and even though it like after I like max out an account in some like MMO or something like that and like like I've got I've put all these hours into it even though that does nothing for the real world it makes me feel a sense of like hey you know what I enjoy doing that and I have something to prove that I enjoy doing that and that's I like that okay I can always get, go back to my old school RuneScape character and I can like the progress that I put into the game is always there and I can always go back to it I, I enjoy that even though I spent so many hours on it like you, you get where I'm coming from right long term term progression systems give players a sense of accomplishment and it makes the games enjoyable to play for years. Now, even though Brawl Stars does have some pay to win aspects in it, the game did feel like it was lacking a sense of long term progression before the Power 11 update. The Power 11 update did improve this, but if I'm being honest, I, I don't think that it made the additional grind feel really worth it. Okay. However, when they added Power 11, they also added Club League, which was one of the biggest buffs to free-to-play progression ever added to Brawl Stars. In fact, there are players who had a max out account before Power 11 and who were in solid clubs that performed well in Club League that are now reaching the point where almost all of their brawlers are Power 11. They're all the way maxed out, okay? Now, these players had to be really active in order to do that, but it takes players less time to max out an account in Brawl Stars than any other of Supercell's games. It also costs less money to max out in Brawl Stars than any other Supercell games. Now, I'd be lying if I told you that Brawl Stars is the most free-to-play friendly game on mobile. And yes, it is more pay to win in 2022 than it was in 2021. So I can hardly blame some of the current players who are unhappy with Supercell's decision to add Power 11 in the game, but it's still better than most of the games I've played in the past five years when it comes to monetization. And I wouldn't let Power 11 just keep you from playing the game so long as you are enjoying the core gameplay. If you're not, then obviously, like, 
you get where I'm coming from, okay? Now, the next thing I want to talk about is gotcha mechanics. Sweet, sweet gambling. <laughs> People don't really view Brawl Stars as a gotcha game, but if you unlock new characters by opening up loot boxes, it's a gotcha game, no matter how way you squeak it, okay? However, the big reason why Brawl Stars doesn't feel like a gotcha game is that every single box that you open, whether or not they have a new character in it, is worth it. This is because that pretty much all progression in the game comes from opening boxes, whereas progression for most gotcha games comes from grinding out other content, and most of the items you get from loot boxes don't help you unless you get that new character. But because every box is worth opening in Brawl Stars, it doesn't feel like a gotcha game. Now additionally, gotcha games are typically full of like really predatory gambling mechanics that don't exist in Brawl Stars, and I'm really glad they don't. In fact, Brawl Stars has a very clear system put in place to ensure that if you you play long enough and you open up enough boxes, you are guaranteed to get every character in the game, including the most rare legendary brawlers. Now, it might take you a while to unlock all the new characters, but I really appreciate that Brawl Stars doesn't take advantage of its players by encouraging excessive spending, like whale hunting, right? There are people that have spent a lot of money on Brawl Stars. I should know. I'm one of them. I do so because I create content around the game and I want to be aware of what is ahead in the game for my players so I can create content around it. Also, I like having an unfair competitive advantage and writing off as a tax write-off, right? Like, I'm not gonna lie, I enjoy that. But the vast majority of players don't ever feel encouraged to spend a large amount of money on the game like I have, okay? And also, one of my favorite aspects about Brawl Stars is that spending money on the game actually feels very worth it. I've played a lot of games where I spent money on it and have regretted that decision, and like, I don't know, maybe I, I, I I'm, it's hard for me to say whether or not I feel this way because uh, it's my job, but I haven't regretted spending money in Brawl Stars. That might not be a fair statement, though, because I do create content around it, so that's really hard for me to separate. I feel like I, for this video, I do a really good job at separating all of my thoughts and feelings as a content creator versus a gamer. That's one thing I'm having a hard time separating. But the Brawl Pass is incredibly worth it, and free-to-play players can even save their gems to buy every other Brawl Pass for free, which is awesome because the Brawl Pass just provides so much value and has plenty of cosmetics in it as well. So when it comes to gotcha games and the gotcha mechanics in Brawl Stars, I think Brawl Stars is one of the best gotcha games I've ever played. However, there is one important aspect of gotcha games that I think Brawl Stars doesn't do as well as some others. Now typically, I'm going to simplify this, there are three ways that gotcha games get their players excited about unlocking new characters. The first is a unique set of abilities that actually impacts battle. Brawl Stars does a great job at this. Now, the second way that gotcha games do this is by making their characters overly attractive to their players, okay? By this, I mean that they make their characters overly cute, overly muscular, and probably the most common is by making them overly sexy. Brawl Stars doesn't do this, and to be clear, I am very glad that they don't do this. Personally, I think that making characters overly attractive in-game actually cheapens the actual game experience a lot of the times, unless you go to that game specifically for that. In that case, like, okay, then yeah, you might as well, right? But a lot of gotcha games will do this. Now, I have played games that do this in very good taste that I have been like, you know what, that's a little much, but... I'm okay with that because, uh, well, because for the most the part, they do a pretty good job. But most games take this a little too far. <laughs> so the fact that Brawl Stars doesn't emphasize the physical attributes of their characters, in my opinion, is a very positive thing. But that's not what I'm here to talk about. The third thing that gotcha games do to get their players excited about unlocking new characters is character depth and lore, okay? Background story. I've played gotcha games that like celebrate their characters' birthdays and like give players items for every single one of their characters' birthdays. So, like it's like, oh, so like you get where I'm coming from, right? A good gotcha game will build up a story behind every character in creative ways to get their players invested in their characters. They give each character's unique personalities. They make you love them. They make you relate to them. They make, they sometimes they even make you hate them. They do this through quests in game that teach you about each character and they build up this background story and like they're if they're really good they'll also make you excited every single time you learn more about their characters now doing this does require a lot of work and effort in order for it to feel natural instead of forced but if a game is able to do this like very well it makes the game feel very interactive and full and it's like it's a lot like watching a movie or a tv series except you actually get to interact with those characters so like in some ways I, it's it's really i i enjoy Enjoyed that experience when it's done tastefully. Now, strangely enough, Brawl Stars does a great job at this, but they also do like kind of a, a bad job at it, in my opinion. Let me explain. Brawl Stars has a very
very interesting story behind it. And they've done an amazing job at building hype in the community regarding the lore behind Brawl Stars. In fact, I think the Brawl Stars community is like so thirsty for more lore because every single time we get some, it's so good, okay? I've got a whole Brawl Theory series talking about everything you need to know right here. It's really cool. But that's actually part of the issue. In order for you to learn about Brawl Stars' lore, you literally have to leave the game to learn anything, okay? Aside from some voice lines and some character descriptions, the game does almost nothing to explain the lore behind each character. Most of the lore that we know has happened through Brawl Talks, social posts, and websites that don't actually like, exist inside the game. So even though Brawl Stars does have some very interesting lore, most of the players have no clue that the game takes place in a defunct amusement park that experiments on its guests. Also, the frequency that we get new information about Brawlers is like way too low, and even though we do know a lot about some Brawlers, there's a lot more that we don't know, and there's a lot of characters that we like, we, we know like maybe two or three things, and that's it. Now, to be fair, most gacha games that do a good job with this are primarily player versus environment, rather than player versus player games like Brawl Stars is. It's a lot easier to build character depth in a game that is PvE, because you can actually create a storyline for that those characters. And I, I think that Brawl Stars has done a pretty good job at building up the game's lore in a very creative way, especially for a PvP game. And I also do give them props for doing so in such a creative way. It's, it's, it's really cool. But if you're looking for a game that will take you through an interesting story and get you invested in their characters, Brawl Stars just isn't going to do that for you. So you better be here for the gameplay. And the next thing I wanted to talk about is update frequency, which is a huge factor when playing online games like Brawl Stars. If you're gonna invest hundreds of hours into a game, you want to make sure that they're adding enough new content to make the investment actually feel worth it in the long run. Update frequency and update size has been one of the biggest issues that Supercell has had in their games and ever since Supercell games were released. Supercell has been founded on the core belief of small developer teams in order to eliminate as much red tape as possible. And that is a big reason why Supercell has such a reputation for making amazing games. Because they give the power to the developers, the people that care about making games, Games, rather than the actual CEO and rather than like the finance guys who only care about the money and the, the bottom line. Brawl Stars has to care about that to some extent, but really their developers are the ones that are running the show. They're, they primarily focus on actually making good games. However, that also means that they cannot produce as much content as other game companies. I don't care how, how you look at it or try to spin it. A team of 30 people just can't do as much as a team of 300, even without the red tape. It's just, it, it just doesn't make sense. You can't, you can't do it. In my 100% honest opinion, Brawl Stars updates aren't big enough or frequent enough to compete with a lot of other big games these days. But Brawl Stars has come a long way since it was first released five years ago. Brawl Stars is updating their game more frequently and more consistently with bigger updates than they've ever done before. We get an update every two months, and with each update we get one to two new characters, a new season pass with a new environment and theme that also comes with quite a few skins and cosmetics. We get a temporary special game mode as well that rotates in with other special special game modes that we get to try on on the weekends or like randomly. And we also usually get like some small changes and additions or like quality of life improvements. And that's a pretty standard update every two months. On top of that, we usually get like a big feature added into the game every like two to three updates. Now this might not be as much in comparison to some games that are like constantly adding big game changing features like every update, like all the time but it's a lot more than Brawl Stars has ever done before. And like, if you doubt me, just go look at the Brawl Stars wiki and look at some updates from a couple of years ago, okay? Like, the amount of content that we are getting is way more than we ever got. But there's a lot of players that have been playing for several years, like me, five years, who are feeling like, you know, it's not enough. And I understand why they feel like that, because you know what? <laughs> We're burning through the content faster than Brawl Stars can actually produce it, because Brawl Stars has a smaller team than a lot of these other game developers do. Either way, though, I think that we have to give Brawl Stars a lot of props for adding more content in each update than we've ever had, as well as for their consistency in doing so. I do think they would really benefit from adding one big feature to the game with every update. And I know that's a lot to ask for their small team, but I think that's what they need to in order to keep up with the long-term players like me who are eating through content super quickly. I've tried figuring out how Supercell could solve this issue, and the only thing I can think of is outsourcing different content, and Supercell is going to have to figure out how they need to do that, but like, I think that's something they need to consider. Okay, this video is already like way longer than I thought it was going to be. So let's do a rapid fire mode where Brawl Stars gets bonus points for being better than most other games for certain things, and no bonus points for being worse than other games or just being 
average. How does Brawl Stars compare to other games when it comes to listening to community feedback? I give them bonus points for this, okay? With the exception of them taking a very long time to improve gears, the Brawl Stars team does above average when it comes to applying community feedback. They've done, they've shown this many times in the past, pretty much every single time. They've, they've always listened to our feedback, and most of the time, they do so fairly quickly. How does Brawl Stars compare to other games when it comes to the social gaming experience? No bonus points here. If you have friends that play Brawl Stars already, Brawl Stars is very fun to play with them. It's a great game for playing with friends, but it doesn't actually encourage social interaction very much other than Club League, which did make it more social somewhat recently. But if you're looking for a social game and you're not one that naturally engages with other players, Brawl Stars isn't very social. How does Brawl Stars compare with other games when it comes to the competitive scene? I've got to give them bonus points for this, okay? The game has a huge skill cap and a very competitive esports scene. It's insane. It's so much so that I've just, I straight up gave up on trying to be a competitive player and I am a competitive person, okay? Also, anyone can compete competitively even if they don't have a maxed out account because all brawlers are maxed out in friendly rooms. Plus, non-pro players can also participate in Power League, which is very competitive. And I'd argue that Brawl Stars does a better job at competitive balance changes than most other games. I know some people will disagree with me, but I've played a lot of games that are competitive and and Brawl Stars is balanced. They, they do a great job. How does Brawl Stars compare to other games when it comes to community made content and mods? Now, Supercell has a strict no modding policy, which I think is great for competitive, but not so great for community made content. However, Brawl Stars does have a map maker where players can submit their maps and play other community maps with like all sorts of different like in game mods and stuff like that. And I'm, I'm going to give Brawl Stars some bonus points for this because they are above average. Not every kind of game actually allows you to create maps and stuff, but I do think they could add more features to the game to allow for more creativity. How does Brawl Stars' early game experience compare to other games? I'm going to give them bonus points for this. Brawl Stars has a lot to offer to new players, and like seriously, think of the first time you started playing Brawl Stars. It is, it's one of the most exciting games to play as a new player. Progression feels really fast paced and exciting. You unlock a lot of characters fairly quickly at the very start, and like there's a lot to learn in all these new game modes and stuff. It's, it's really fun. How does Brawl Stars' mid game game experience compared to other games. I'm going to give Brawl Stars bonus points for this as well. Progression feels really good for quite a while, and there's a solid reason to come back to play every day as you unlock new brawlers with new powers, like gears and star powers or gadgets and star powers and stuff like that. Uh, those abilities for the brawl, like it, the game continues to change and adapt for you. Mid game is really fun and exciting. How does Brawl Stars' end game experience compare with other games? This depends. <laughs> if you don't have a competitive personality, once you have unlocked all the brawlers and your account is relatively maxed out, there's honestly not much of a reason to play every day other than to prepare for new content. Like you start building up like a, a collection of boxes so that when the newest brawler comes out, then you can get the new brawler. Like that's really the only reason why you do it at the end game. Okay. But if you are a competitive player, you're going to love like pushing brawlers to new trophy counts, pushing higher in power league, and the game has a lot to offer competitively for its end game players. Now, because the answer to this depends on what your personality, I'm not going to give Brawl Stars bonus points, but that doesn't mean that Brawl Stars' end game isn't entirely stale. So then, is Brawl Stars worth playing in 2022? Ultimately, I think it comes down to whether or not you find the game fun. Now, I know that's a really simple way to look at it, especially after I've talked about the game from so many different angles, but, but that's, that's how it comes down to it. If you're having fun, the game's absolutely a ton of fun and like you're gonna enjoy it. But if you're not having fun, there are lots of other free mobile games out there. And as a content creator that creates Brawl Stars content, I hate myself for saying that, but as a gamer who relates with other gamers, absolutely, like I really, I, I get that. Now for me personally, I absolutely think Brawl Stars is worth the time. I wouldn't be making this video if I didn't, right? Even after five years, I'm still playing almost every day, even though I have given up on pushing competitively. I'm not a competitive player, but I find the gameplay so good, and I really appreciate the, the Brawl Stars developer team so much. Because they, they listen to us. They are always adding cool things. Honestly, I, there, there are going to be other Supercell teams that are going to hate me for saying this. I think that they are the best team. I really do like and I haven't met the other teams as personally as I've met the Brawl Stars developer team, but like they do such a good job. OK, I'm really excited about the game's future and I'm not saying the game is perfect. I, it definitely has its flaws. I've talked about it in this video. I've talked about them extensively in my gears video, which you can watch, um, which I've already talked about, but it is 
It's a freaking amazing game. And I definitely say it is above average in comparison to a lot of what's out there. So yes, Brawl Stars is worth it in 2022. In fact, I'd argue that it's even more enjoyable to play now than it ever has been. But I really want to know what your guys' thoughts are. Maybe you have a completely different opinion and that this is a place to talk about it. I want to know what your thoughts are. So let me know in the comment section below. And also check out this Brawl Theory video where I uncover Brawl Stars' dark secrets and subscribe for more content, including content on my other channels. For now, this is Kairos. I'm ticking by. Don't forget to use code Kairos in the Brawl Stars shop and we will see you in Brawl Stars.